tell many people about this. <laughs> I don't, and this is why I'm saying it. Citify is a program that you pay for that rips music off of Spotify. I, I, I know that's really bad, but it will get you actually high quality music. Um, you know, try to listen to the music regularly so that the artist gets the royalties from it. Fuck Spotify, but like, you know, I don't know if you know the backstory about that, but like, um, Citify is a great program that I've used for years. Um, I think it's $40. Um, and it will get you really high quality rips. Um, these are some of the best practices I would like to like share from my end. Um, I already said this before, but like um, purchase music from artists uh, or download free copies through SoundCloud, try not to rip. If you rip music from YouTube, any platform, um, you wanna be mindful of the bit rate. And bit rate basically what it is is the amount of data that a, sound, a, a song can hold. You can see, and you were asking this question earlier, like one, you can tell audibly if it's really low quality by the sound. It sounds like a, a 90s car, you know, like a, like, a, like a car radio, that like really painful sound, and as it gets louder, you'll hear what I'm talking about. But visually, if you wanted to know, we'll go into Rekordbox, and I'll show you the column in which it can show the bit rate. You really want songs that are over 256 kilobytes per second, um, more data, better sound quality. Doesn't mean that I don't play music that is below that, it's just like, be careful over really a loud system, you're gonna hurt people's ears. Um, there's a, like a more presence of people streaming music versus like downloading it. My only riff about that is just like, if you don't have Wi-Fi or Wi-Fi goes out, like you're kinda fucked. I mean, I guess you could download offline, but like, I guess the old school way of doing things is like, finding music and downloading it. I'm sure streaming platforms will be more of a thing in the future, um, but yeah. Um, we talked a little bit about this during the panel, but um, these are just some questions I ask myself as I'm preparing a set, um, especially because I'm an op open format DJ. Um, I'm really thinking about my audience. Like, I really, if I, going into a, uh, a gig where I like know what the audience is gonna be like and I can pretty much be in a place where I'm like, all right, I know exactly what how they're gonna feel through this set. I won't make backup plans. But like, I played Winwood Pride, and like, I kind of knew who was gonna be there, and I was like, well, all right, let me make some like plans in case they don't love Bila Funk. Let me put some Tech House in here. Let me put some Bereo in here, which I normally don't play. Um, also, like the arc of your set, right? So like, my Big thing is just like, create a story. Don't hit me over the head with like a really high BPM the whole time, because I'm gonna get exhausted or your audience is gonna get exhausted. Create like a dynamic flow, create a climax, create a moment, um, and people will remember your sets, you know? Um, we talked about this before, well-organized libraries allow you to make sets faster. Um, I can look up stuff by genre. Um, there's many ways to organize libraries. Crates, I do them by genre because I have a lot of different genres, but there, there could probably be a whole talk about this. Um, I'm gonna skip export mode for a second because I'm gonna come back to that. Um, I kind of talked about this before. Like, so, so, you know, like, what time are you playing? Like, are you opening? Are you um, headlining? Um, are you closing? This really dictates the set. Because uh, if you're opening, maybe you don't want to hit them over the head with like hard techno, maybe you wanna like come in softer. Um, how do you wanna open your set? I always open my sets with like really, really a dope ass song because then they know you're on the decks. Like, you know, that's like kinda like vocalizing to people like, hey, I'm here and there's a shift happening because oftentimes no one's announcing that you're on. It's just a shift that happens and like, okay, wow, whoa, whoa what just happened? This person's on the decks. Um, and like I said before, um, an arc or flow to your set. Um, so really being in tune with the audience and seeing are they exhausted right now? Can I, can I get a little bit more energy out? Should I start slower and bring them up to a higher BPM and then drop? Like there's so many ways to do this and I think like this technique comes over time. It's, it's like really being connected with your audience and seeing how 
um, people are reacting to the music you're playing. Um, in the process of setting up, and I'll, we'll talk about how to do this, set your hot cues. Hot cues are basically bookmarks in your music um, that you can jump to. Um, I highly advise setting hot cues in your set before um, getting onto the dance floor. Okay, so let me move over to Record Box for a second um, so I can talk about export mode. So this is Record Box, bro, uh, Record Box, <laughs> Le Record Box. Um, if you haven't seen it before, or you're like used to Serato, or maybe this is the first time you're seeing it, um, welcome. Uh, we have one deck here, another deck here. I can put um, on the left is like my playlists. So let's just like open up the gay agenda. So like, I mean, it's as easy as a drag and drop, and I can view my songs. So there's two modes that I like to be in. It's export and performance. Export I think of as like my preparation place. Um, the reason why I like export mode is because I can literally go, there's this like preview panel that I love. So if I click on this, all I have to do is actually click on the song and it will show me this, like I can hear the song versus having to do this and hitting play. You can, but um, I, I guess you can. For some reason I've had issues doing it in performance mode. I don't know, have you? Okay, so technically you can in performance, but I feel like I've done this and I, it doesn't work. So you can probably just stay in performance mode, but yeah, see like if I play it, it's, I don't hear anything. Um, maybe I have the wrong setting, but um, yeah. Yeah, um, absolutely. So I'll go a little bit more overview of, of record box in a second. Um, so yeah, so most of the time I'm in export mode when I am just like starting to like go through the, all my music, which oh, is over here by the collection. That would showed me all my music. I'm gonna move this over. Um, uh, yeah, so these are all, this is all my music and then I can actually just go through and hit the preview pane. Um, after I've dumped a bunch of music into my crates over here, like, uh, let's see, Gay Agenda here. I've got all this music in here. Now I wanna like actually listen through and, and see if this works. Um, I'm gonna switch over to performance mode just because I like the view much better here because I have a deck side by side and it looks a little bit more like an ex-DJ. Um, um, I want to just go back to my slides for a second because I, I, I wanted to talk, to, uh, I mentioned something about bitrate. Okay, so let's talk about hot cues and bitrate. So the question before was just like, how can you tell if the bitrate from a song is low quality? So if you right click on the column, these are all the options of columns that you can see. Um, for the most part, the ones I use, you're gonna have you know, track, title, artist, BPM, genre, maybe comments. I don't use rating, but one option in here is bit rate. Uh, I am right there? Wait. Oh, I see. So, where did it go? Oh, here, okay. So check it out. So you see here, most of the time you're gonna say 256 or 320. VBR is just, it says very, it's like variable, which I was like, that's interesting. I don't know what that means. But here you go, here's one that's, um, I, definite, I definitely feel like ripped this off of line. Uh, but here it's 128. Um, it doesn't sound awful, I'm just mindful of it. Like sometimes when you're listening to something, you're like, damn, it sounds awful. Check the bit rate and see what it what it looks like. It's not a hard fast rule. Okay. Um, you could check them by. I mean, that doesn't necessarily. I mean, wave files usually have more data in them, but so if I were to do Command I, I can open up the information. Um, this might tell me if it's a.
sorry to kind of go into this. Uh, I'm only the piece that we do this for a long time, but what we file specifically, um, it's more like it's a file that you want for a final shot before it's actually uh, put into like the mastering machine, mastering the process. But on real beats or performance as a DJ, you want something like. Because you're talking about like lossly or, or compressed. Okay, do you want you can say a little bit about that because someone might not know why why wave or MP3. All, all that entails is from my experience, waves. Because I do make my own music. When I bounce waves, a lot of the times they are corrupt when I try to perform them. One hundred percent. Yeah. If it was a wave, had I known I should have done it as an AISF or something else, that wouldn't have happened. But I would recommend not ever putting a wave on the USB, anything else but that. So, AISF, yeah. Just a flat, a different format. What we're talking about also, like if no one knows what a wave is, it's a type of audio file. So there's AISF, uh, wave, MP3. Um, and, and the real difference here is like whether the file's kind of loosely compressed. Um, the more compressed the file, sometimes you lose data, not always, but yeah, typically you want to be, like if you're a producer and you put up this new mix, like you want it as an MP3, because I've also run into the same situation where WAV files can be corrupt. It's not all WAV files, but some can be corrupt, and it gives you this error on the CDJ, and like, it's terrifying. <laughs> it's terrifying, you just don't wanna run into that. But if you wanted to see what the file format is, is uh, command I, uh, here it is under summary, MP3. This is not something you need to be like checking all the time. Um, I'm gonna talk about this anyway. You should run through your set before you perform. That's when I catch those files. I'm like, oh shit, this doesn't work. Um, and it's just good to A, C, like you should just practice your set before you go on. It's, sometimes you don't have time, but like it's a good rule of thumb, okay. I'm gonna move on to hot cues. Um, so like I mentioned, they're bookmarks. Um, these little green symbols here are hot cues I've made before. So um, it saves time when you're actually mixing live, right? So like um, it helps me, I, I, I'm a big person where I like loop melodies. So I'll make a, I'll make a hot cue somewhere and then be able to loop that melody over another track. Um, and then it just helps me jump to like different parts of the, the song. I mean, the other question probably would be here is like, where do I put a hot cue? And that's something I feel like you figure out over time and depends on how you mix. Sometimes people put hot cues like right before a drop or like the beginning of the track um, or wherever makes, makes sense. And I think that's like a, something you figure out over time. Um, just talking about the overview of the actual, what we're looking at here. I know there was a question about tempo, right? Was there not a question? BPM, BPM okay. Um, for folks who don't know what BPM is, it's just beats per minute. It's uh, also, we refer to it as tempo. So it's this number right here. Um, I can increase it or decrease it. 150 is very fast. Um, this, I think this is actually really important to talk about, wide. So, and you'll see this on the decks, we'll talk about it. Um, this is the, the way in which we can increment the BPM. So I can either have it at, that says six. So that's like very little. So you see how it barely moves when I increase. 10, which is a little bit more. Should be 16 and then wide. Why this matters is because when you're actually shifting the tempo, um, I don't know, I don't know what it's called, but like on the actual decks, there's like a panel where you can actually a slider that you can move the 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 tempo up and down. If you have it on wide and you touch it like a lot, you're gonna your BPM is gonna skyrocket. So like, it depends on how you like to mix, but like I feel like somewhere between 10 and 16 is a good place because you can slowly increment and not like jump 
40 de like beats per minute. Does that make sense? Yeah, okay, cool. Um, this middle panel is the EQ, um, an equalizer. Um, if you've ever played with a car radio before, it's the same thing. If you have your treble, your mids, your bass, we'll talk about like this a little bit more when I touch the CDJ, uh, touch the XDJs and like how you want to blend um, or or beat mixing. Um, loop section over here. Um, there's one thing I do want to show, which I, I think is like a little bit more advanced. Um, so, have you ever had a song? You're you're playing a song and you wish that once the cursor hits that part of the song, it would go into a loop. So you can set that up. Um, so how you would do that, because uh, like I have, I have songs where I'm like, I don't want it to continue to play, I want it just to loop when it, when it starts. Uh, I think it's called, what's it called? Mm, hold on one second, sorry y'all. Um, here's one over, one over. Oh, this track. This track is so hot, by the way. <laughs> okay, so you see this red uh, cursor here. Basically what's gonna happen is it's playing and then it automatically does a loop, which is great. Um, how do you do that? So you go into memory queue. Um, you would put the cursor where you need to put it. You put memory. Oh because it's in a loop right now, but like memory. And then you, it would have to be in a loop as well. So let's just put a loop on it. And then, hold on, sorry y'all. Mm, so memory. Oh, is it in the same loop? Sorry, y'all. Okay, there we go. And then you press it again and it becomes red. Oh, I guess you can only do one. Yeah, you can only do one at a time. Learn something new today. Um, but so you saw how I did that. So I loop, the, I loop the section that I want, hit memory, and then you click on the actual loop and it turns red and that's your active loop. I think that's a really, really valuable tip because there's oftentimes like songs will break into a whole nother song and it's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I don't want you to do that. Um, and that's how you do that. It's called the active loop. Okay. Um, let me go back to here and see. Okay. Beyond that within Record Box, um, I'm going to talk about other little things, but that's like the general. Um, the general look of the actual platform. I'm gonna talk about related uh, tracks in a minute and CDJs and stuff like that. So let's talk about, okay, we're gonna move on to the Camelot system. So for a lot of DJs, I feel like they ignore this, <laughs> uh, but it's, it's, it's very valuable information. Um, so, have, has anyone heard of like Circle of Fifths? Yeah, okay, cool. Or they saw something like this. Okay, so you see these like numbers here? Okay, so that's the Camelot system. We're going to talk about that now. Um, so, basically, there's something called the circle of fifths, and it's just basically a circle that shows like what um, keys are harmonically or like um, complementary to each other, um, and what would be considered like dissonant. Now that's too much to remember, um, so DJs decided to make their own version, which is the Camelot system, which is this number system. Um, actually, though, if you look closely, you'll see like E minor, B major, F sharp. Like, who wants to remember that shit? Like, let's just figure out an easier way to do it. So the outer circle is the major keys and the inner circle is the minor keys. The way how you know things are complementary 
is how you move. Now you see the yellow like section here. So if I'm on 8B, for example, this one, I can move down and that would be complementary. I can move left or right. So that's considered its relative minor or I think a perfect fourth or a perfect fifth. Well, how can I move to 10B without it being dissonant? Um, I would move to something like 9B and then I'd be able to move to 10B. Um, I wouldn't say this is a hard, fast rule. I'm just teaching this just because I think it's important to know your tools. And um, if you've seen this before and wondered what it was or how to use it, um, this is how to use it. For me, I use my ear, so like, and I feel like other DJs can do this too, is just like, if it sounds dissonant and sounds crazy, like, you're probably not mixing right, and you probably could refer to this system and realize, oh wow, I'm like, I'm jumping the I'm, I'm jumping um, what's considered like a dissonant uh, span. Um, I learned something today, which is, um, so let's say I put this track up, right? Did you see that highlight happen? Yeah. It shows the consonant keys that are alike, which is so dope because I didn't even know that. I was like, you're out here like looking at this stupid Camelot system while you're like DJing? Like, no, we're not doing that. So Rekordbox will do that for you automatically, um, which is really, 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 really nice. Not all songs have keys as you can see, but um, I think it's just, like important to get used to listening and saying like you like you kn you know when something sounds wrong or you you eventually will um, I think maybe take a music theory class but uh, if not and your songs actually have keys in them this is a way for you to be able to tell um, yeah. That's a great question. So, and I think we were gonna, I was gonna get to that, or I missed it by accident. But when you load music into Rekordbox, the BPM will not be, there'll be a lot of data missing. Art, the artwork, everything. Pretty much the only thing that's gonna be there is like a title track. Um, let me see if I can load some music in for you guys so you can see. <laughs> I'll be missing you. Oh shit. No, don't play. Okay, so we have I'll Be Missing You by Faith Evans. We don't have a BPM here. We don't have artwork, we don't have a preview, we don't have much. So what you do is you right click and you analyze the track. Okay, great. That's just saying like the BPM range. And it's analyzing the track down here. Great, and now we have that data. Um, we didn't get the key, which is annoying. But point is, um, if you ever see a beep, if you ever see a track that says zero, you haven't analyzed it, and this is a part of this. You would never analyze a track in the middle of your set. You should not be doing that. Yeah. Oh my God, you're the best. Thank you. It's like we're giving you the key. No, 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 no. I'm dead. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Not my whole library missing key. Thank you. Wait, 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 wait. We're about to be creepy. Thank you. See, like, does anybody know what phrase is for? What's that for? Are you joking? <laughs> See? Okay, I just, well, I just, I just selected, uh, look at all those beautiful keys popping up. But we have met one missing, so. Uh, okay. Phrase here. Do we want, we want full waveform, right? Yeah. Okay. That's incredible, wow. Well, this is a remix. I feel like it would make more sense on like a, 
actual song. Like, I'm missing you. See, we learn things new, learn new things all the time. Okay, so, well that's there light data, but. There are a lot of things, if you take the picture, so it's one of the pictures, scroll down, then it's where you click and trace the right to the point. So click that? Oh, it, uh, this one? Okay. Now that's fucking incredible. Wait, that's like game changer, actually. You're talking about if it. Oh yeah, actually, no. You're bringing up a good point. I I was just about to. Oh, analyze. No, this is. I know what you're talking about. Whether it's like uh, alphabetic or not. Um, I just. Okay. All right, I don't want to get too carried away in here, but basically there's a setting where you can have it as the Camelot uh, key or you can have it as like F major, so forth. I just saw it too. Um, right here, right here, right here, perfect, yeah. So now you see the difference here? If, if, like you're, if you're like classically trained and you... Cool. Thank you so much for that. I appreciate that. Um, this is amazing. Like being able to see the verses and stuff like that. That's just amazing. Okay. Thank you. Um, let me go back to the PowerPoint real quick. Um, let's talk about grids. I feel like this is a huge one. Um, so when I went from Serato to Recordbox, I just noticed like Recordbox just like does not do a great job at analyzing the grid. Um, and what I mean by the grid is just like this, th this actual waveform. So what you'll see sometimes is, let's see, like that one's good. What's the one that I was bad? That one's good. Uh, I think that one's good too. Damn. So. Sometimes what you'll see is like th the first bar would start like over here and you have to actually correct the beat grid. Um, so how you do that, so I actually corrected this beat grid already as you can see. Um, what you would do, this would be unlocked, but basically you put the cursor where the song actually starts and you press this which will actually line up the song and this is also a good spot to talk about like if the BPM was ever wrong, you can, you can change it here. And then you lock this and that will fix the beat grid. Um, that happens very, very, very often. Actually, I think this one is, nope. I've corrected all of these. Uh, I thought was, I wanted to show you guys an example, but um, I mean, this one's off like just a little bit, but yeah. Um, another thing I wanted to talk about is just like hot, key, hot keys, like they're super important and will make your productivity much quicker. Um, these are some of the ones that I wanted to highlight, which is just like loading a track quickly, um, playing a song, setting a hot cue, versus like dragging and dropping as you, you've seen I've, I've done quite a bit. Um, all right, we're gonna move to the decks now. Um, basically, I'm just gonna like hold a camera over the deck and then uh, it will airplay to this this screen, so y'all don't have to huddle around. 